Well, time to start a Poland Daily interview and we welcome our U.S. East Coast correspondent, our very own Matthews Ruszyński. Hello, how, do, how are you? Hey, doing well. Uh, great to be here again. Thanks for the invite. Uh, our pleasure. Uh, I've called you because we have a terrible tragedy in the East Coast and the ship sailing in the night hit the bridge and the bridge basically fell like in the movies. Right, the um, uh, the mere sort of scenery or the pictures uh, from from that uh, from that accident are uh, really stunning, um, and it is a catastrophe if you think about it. Uh, not just the sort of the dramatic pictures of it, but in fact, um, uh, Baltimore and the Baltimore Bay um, serves as one of the main uh, main uh, trade ports uh, in the U.S. Uh, so it handles quite a lot of cargo, uh, quite quite a lot of trade, and quite a lot of uh, raw materials that arrive in, into the U.S. or or that are being shipped. But mostly those that arrive. Uh, there are some factories that, that that are set up right at the ports, uh, right uh, when uh, when the materials are offloaded. So that will certainly cause some, um, uh, say, supply chain disruptions. Uh, there is there's this, there's talk that um, uh, some other ports, uh, those in New Jersey, um, if you're somewhat familiar with the U.S. East Coast, uh, so uh, nearby you have New Jersey ports. There are some ports in, in the state of Virginia. So those ports can um, uh, maybe uh, take over some of the. Uh, s- uh, Process take over the processing of some of those supplies, but um, but the hit to the Baltimore port is obviously uh, huge. Well, in fact, you cannot even enter that port because the bridge fell in its entirety, so it actually blocked access to the port. And also, the bridge itself was part of the um, one of the um, uh, main uh, roads. Uh, it was actually part of part of one of the interstate highways. Um, uh, obviously, well, thankfully, uh, there's uh, there are ways to get around it. Uh, the, you you could take some detours. Uh, reach the, the other highways, which will obviously add delays. Uh, but in fact, it, it is it is a huge. Uh, the consequences of this are not trivial. Um, is it going to be a one-off event? Uh, we will see. Obviously, there will be a lot of cost, a lot of delays uh, in, uh, repairing it. Um, uh, in the year of um, in the year that uh, that involves um, a very heated campaign, is it going to be a factor? Maybe in a sense that uh, U.S. Uh, infrastructure, or should we say, the crumbling infrastructure, uh, infrastructure that uh, that has been um, uh, poorly funded, uh, has been somewhat of an issue. So uh, that may may could potentially spill over, but it's kind of early, uh, early, and we, we will uh, yet have to see how that uh, develops. Well, but the tale of this bridge is not the tale of the crumbling U.S. infrastructure. It's a tale about the security in ports. I've just read that the ship had two pilots on board. And upon the accident, the Maersk company, the Danish shipping company, that's absolute uh, uh, behave, behemoth in this industry, lost 2% of value. Right. Um, uh, again, it's trade, it's security. There are many factors in here. And uh, security, as you mentioned, uh, that's also an important one. Uh, Baltimore itself is also, is also uh, there, is, uh, there are some naval bases around that port. Uh, so those will probably also get affected. Although like the main, uh, the, the main uh, primary bases are, are along the coast of Virginia, but there are also some in the Baltimore port itself. So those obviously uh, should be blocked. Um, but uh, I guess we will have to wait for some update from the Department of Defense, uh, how, how they see it, how it's going to affect them. Of course. Um, obviously, the United States entered the phase of the presidential election uh, for 2024. And um, part of this election is a discussion regarding the further uh, support for Ukraine. And are there any updates on this issue? There are, in fact. Um, well, uh, we should backtrack a little bit because there are so many different um, heated debates going on through the uh, through Congress. Uh, Ukraine is just one of them, uh, but not the, and not even the main one. Uh, we have to start off that uh, we still have the ongoing uh, border um, uh, uh, dispute uh, about securing the, the southern border. And um, uh, you have to remember that um, uh, the current administration, in some uh, in some ways, effectively um, made the debate about Ukraine kind of a 
hostage to the debate uh, around the uh, around the border. But uh, there is, there has been little done uh, um, little done uh, around around uh, fixing uh, fixing the border issue, securing the border, and that um, uh, that obviously puts um, puts the whole discussion uh, in in a in a very tough spot. On one hand, you have Republicans, which uh, uh, which as a party uh, has been kind of trampled and defeated. So uh, Republicans are, Republicans are in no um, uh, sort of no rush to make huge concessions, especially when you when you are talking about the package uh, package to finance uh, Ukraine weapons, um, uh, as it is currently being presented. Um, it's sort of in its original um mostly in its original um in original proposal um <clears throat> and uh, it's not quite going to fly um, because there have to be some concessions there have to be some there has to be some uh, consensus uh, some kind of um uh, some some kind of um agreement with Republicans, uh, some cuts to the proposed figures uh, to, to make it pass. Uh, but one uh, one interesting feature just last Friday, uh, the, the U.S. Congress, um, uh, mainly through the actions of the uh, of the um, House Speaker, Mike Johnson, has passed, um, uh, has enabled uh, funding of the U.S. government for, for the remainder of the fiscal year. The fiscal year ends in uh, Ends at the end, end of September, and it's quite vital. Uh, first of all, it opens it opens um, uh, it sort of frees Congress to take up other issues, and one of those is Ukraine. Uh, so um, uh, Ukraine is probably going to be tackled next, uh, and uh, it's interesting to see how that will uh, how that will turn up. As part of the debate surrounding uh, the funding of the government, um, there has been some. Uh, some upheaval uh, coming from from this fringe uh, from the fringe of the Republican Party. It's a very um, um, a, a very a very small group, just j just a few representatives. Um, but uh, conditions um, have been laid um, uh, in the in the prior such that uh, only one uh, Republican representative representative. Uh, 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 sort of a vote, uh, a vote or a motion from uh, from just one representative is enough to trigger, um, trigger a so-called motion, uh, a motion to vacate, meaning uh, meaning a process that would start. Um, that would start uh, uh, sort of removal of the speaker, and it's a very tricky subject. Subject because um, uh, that is exactly how Republicans have removed their own speaker back in October. Um, uh, so that uh, that is why this situation puts uh, the current speaker, Mike Johnson, in a very precarious spot. But despite that, uh, he has actually promised to move the uh, Ukraine uh, Ukraine discussion forward. So um, sometime uh, sometime likely. Not this month, but uh, in April, we should see some movement on it. Uh, what will happen? We shall see. You have to keep in mind that there are some uh, Republicans are very divided uh, when it comes to Ukraine. It, it, it's not a it's not a uniform. No, absolutely not. There are some voices there that are very pro Ukraine, uh, and, uh, pro uh, arming Ukraine, even much more than uh, than some on the Democratic side. Um, so we we'll, we will have to see how that whole de debate develops. On the other hand, the charges regarding the corruptions the uh, are still valid for the Ukrainian government, and they failed to address this issue. That that's at least my feeling. Uh, right, there are there are plenty of issues. One is one is on the there are several on the Ukraine side. Um, uh, uh, well, one as you mentioned is corruption. Uh, another uh, accounting for how that aid is used. Um, another is um, another that shows up uh, in in uh, uh, in the United States is that there is a, uh, sort of uh, more acceptance uh, in, inside uh, inside political circle circles here in the U.S. to send uh, pure military uh, assistance, but um, but to limit uh, any kind of financial assistance because uh, the United States has kind of like a very poor grasp on what happens to the money that, that is being sent there. Um, so that's how, in one way, is that package, uh, the eventual package, uh, might get trimmed from that uh, figure of 60, uh, 60 billion. And in in a, in a sort of high likelihood, it's not going to be 60 billion. It might be a figure somewhat smaller. Oh, yeah, and uh, financial clarity and honesty regarding the funds is not a strong point of the Ukrainian government at the moment. Certainly uh, no, and, and that that uh, that serves it's to their disadvantage, unfortunately. True. Any more comments regarding the, what has happened in Russia last week, and I mean this uh, attack on the trading center near Moscow, and uh, well. From the uh, from the local uh, American perspective, uh, we should actually say that uh, there has been so much happening here in the U.S. politically, as well as in the foreign policy area, 
that uh, um, the uh, Russian terrorist attack hasn't really registered uh, that significantly on on, uh, on politicians' radars. Um, uh, what's really brewing here, um, uh, and what's uh, what's taking up um, a lot of uh, discussion and um, and um, uh, bickering, is the United States' approach to uh, to Israel. Um, uh, I'm not sure if but you're that's aware, it, that's but, it, but that's it. yeah, I'm not. A, I know, but that's just, uh, uh, just apparently... yesterday. Uh, a topic for another conversation, the large one, because it puts American allies in very peculiar position, right? When right, that the has, government that has, of your ally has been against your own. Yeah. Right. That has been brewing for a while. In the prior week, uh, we had this uh, very sort of shocking, uh, shocking and, uh, and unusual speech by the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, uh, calling on new elections in Israel. Yeah. Which, uh, let's, which let's, cut, let's everyone... cut it short now because I really want to discuss Israel more broadly, and our time is up for this particular conversation. So, as you right. see, we once we that. start. Once we start discussing single issue, the rest are coming up like domino and falling, and, and you have to keep it short, cut it down in order to have some clear, clear discussion. But I promise our viewers and, and our, myself that we will definitely talk to Maciej Grusinski very soon about this Israel and the United States and Chuck Schumer's inter speech, because that's whole new ball game. Thank you very much for this conversation. Thanks. Uh, speak soon. That was our co correspondent from the East Coast, as you can tell, New York, New York, the city that never sleeps. Goodbye.